Daniel chapter 5, verse 22. And we've been talking about this party that Belshazzar had. Daniel steps up to the bait with God. All the magicians and astrologers step up the plate with a piece of paper to hang on the wall. He says, verse 22, and thou's his son. And before Daniel gives the, the writing and interpretation, Daniel preaches to the king like, hey, king, you kill me. You ain't getting the dream. I mean, well, not the dream. You're not getting the writing on the wall, and you're not getting the interpretation. So let me give you a few minutes about what God does. And Daniel goes out to everything that happened in Nebuchadnezzar the last time we read about him. With all the pride Nebuchadnezzar has, that Belshazzar has, and the repentance of his father. Nebuchadnezzar falls off the pages of the Bible, the world, up steps his son, and the end of the Babylonian Empire. His son, which would be grandson, O Belsizer, has not humbled thy heart. Belsizer, got a problem with pride. That's the problem with Americans, that's the problem with the English, that's the problems with the Russians. That's the problem with the Baptist churches. Pride. Though thou knowest all this. So everything that happened in Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar knew. But you know, you as a saved person, they know who you are. They know what you believe. They know. But still, I am me. And whatever I believe, God will allow, and everything will be hunky-dory in the end. It's a lie. Because your God that will, that will cast people into hell, my God won't do that. But has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. Pride against God. That's all around you. They have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou, and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines, have drunk wine in them. Now, Daniel was not there. Daniel has been brought in last moment when the party's been crashed by the, the handwriting in the wall, and you know Daniel's looking around, and, oh, what's going on here? Now has praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone. Daniel wasn't there for that. And yet the Holy Spirit says, Daniel, you tell that man what he sent. Oh, we're not supposed to call people out. We're not supposed to name names. What on earth did Daniel just do? Tell me. Old Belsizer, king. <laughs> Sin, 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 sin. How's that? And he's talking to a king that said, take him and kill him. And I don't need no votes. I don't need Congress. I don't need everybody to agree with me. You take that man and you kill him. Daniel says, you're a sinner. Thou art the man. You know what the Christians today? Well, we got to be nice. We got. I let my light shine. I let my salt do. And if you ever told them about Jesus in hell, you know, I let my light. Do they even know you're a Christian? They may not even know you are a Christian. When you step up to a king and say you're guilty, and this is your sin. Listen, even Paul, even John, Third John. He, he, he calls to attention a man who, who wants all the, the fame and all the glory in the church. Names, names, Peter, names, names. Many, 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 many years later, Paul tells us, I think Paul, tells us the name of the two men that fought against Moses in the wilderness. Jamie's and, uh, I forget his other name. And they're a Christian. Well, we're not supposed to name names. We're not supposed to point out sins. They'll tell me on the street, you're not. Well, okay. God's people did. And the Holy Spirit told Daniel to do it. 
Elijah did it for the for the king Ahab. You and that woman of yours. And he says, look what he says. The gods of the silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone. Almost that image of the dream. Which see not. You got blind gods. Your statue of Mary, she's blind. Your big fat belly button Buddha statue is blind. Your dolls that fit inside of a doll that fits 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 inside. Blind. Your stuffed animals, they're blind. If you got an unsaved ball player, unsaved race car driver, they're blind. Nor here. Oh Mary, oh Mary, oh Mary, flip my beads. Oh Mary, oh Mary, Mary, flip my beads. She ain't listening to you. Allah be praised. Allah be praised. Allah be praised. Allah ain't listening to you. Yeah, you're at the you're at the dog or horse track. Come on, come on, win! Come on, win! Come on, come on! That horse, that dog ain't listening to you. Remember, we had a thing in Connecticut grow up as a boy. It would be OBT. It was you didn't go to the dog track or the horse track. You went to this. It was it was in the strip malls. And you went there and you played shit. There'd be people that I don't even know where the tracks were, but they would go, 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 listen to it. I'm like, they're not gonna hear you. Nor no. Your gods, the silver brass, and iron and all that, your Ouija cards don't know nothing. Your tea leaves don't know nothing. That magician over there don't know nothing. That soothsayer over there doesn't know nothing. That horoscope doesn't know nothing. Belshazzar is sitting there with with a buffet room, buffet room. He's got all these gods. You know there's statues around. You know it's a typical Catholic church layout because the Catholic church comes from Babylon. And he's got writing on the wall. And he has no idea what it says and no one and none of his gods can reveal to him. But well, here comes God Jehovah. And the God whose breath, whose hand thy breath is. Now this is the God that he said, he made man and he breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. This is the God, capital G, Belsizer. This is not your God, this ain't your religious God, this ain't your statue God, this ain't the Catholic God, this ain't the Pope, this ain't Allah, this ain't the, 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 the blown eye Morai angel. And of all the trillion gods of Hinduism and, and India, and this is not a Walt Disney god, you know, twinkle bells and dumbbells and whatever kind of hells. This is the god that he holds your breath. And I don't know if Daniel knows, and the fact is, probably does, you ain't waking up tomorrow morning. And whose are all thy ways? Now, there's much discussion when a physical body dies. This round they believe this, that round they believe this, this round they believe. The Bible says that moment that breath is out of you and don't return into you. You're dead. It's not about the brain. It's not about the heart. Well, we breathed into it. We did CPR and he came back to life. Then he wasn't dead. Death is classified as God took that breath and he's not putting it back in. And all your ways. Well, you know, the President of the United States, he does this, he does that, do this and do that. Those, those are all directed by God and the devil. And where you work, 
where you entertain, where you do or don't go to church, what you do and what you don't read, what you do and what you don't listen to, whatever you do in our ways, my way, God's in it. Jesus said, I am the way. And that the fact is, in our ways, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are in place beholding the evil and the good. Why is evil? Because we're prone to do more evil than we do good. But everything we do is the hand of God. Now, he'll put those road closures up there. He'll put the signs out. he put those little flashing lights out. He'll put the barricades. He'll put the cones out. But it's still our discretion whether we want to crash or we want to keep driving. And yet the Lord's there. There's never a place in any human's life that they go walking through a pathway and go, oh, God's up in it. Oh, man, I didn't know he was going to take that way. Oh, wait a minute. Stop feeding the whales for a moment. We, angel committee here. We got to get together. This guy went a direction. I had no idea. That's, that's not God. Even when we do wrong or when we do right, God has put that path there. You say, well, Satan. Well, God allows Satan to do it. I did the path. I did it my way. God allows you to do it. Then was the part the hand sent from him. So there, that hand came from God. <clears throat> was the fingers there when Daniel there? Or had the fingers disappeared? How much did Daniel know through God? Or, I mean, like I said, the king said, hey, the king just writing. And this writing was written. Man, you know, Daniel does a lot of preaching before he comes up to the... Because it, Daniel's, Daniel's using godly wisdom. With, 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 what did Paul say? With, with guile, I caught you. I forget what it was. If you kill me, then you're not going to get the answer. So here I go. Oh, Lord, fill my mouth. This is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, teko, eupharis. Mene is, tr is doubled, and it's numbered. Teko is a balance. The old-fashioned balance, you know, where, you, where, where there's one plate and there's two plates. And if it wasn't equal, one plate went down, the other plate went up. Teko, is, again, is, is being weighed Whereas is the Medes and the Persians. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Now, in Sodom, we understand God sent two angels. And Sodom was finished. And Gomorrah, in the neighboring city. God did not send angels into Babylon. He sent a hand right in on the walls. Not the bathroom walls, right in on the walls of the banquet hall. Your kingdom has been put into numbering account system. You know, we have a book of numbers of all the names. Babylon has a book of numbers and all the names and all the sins written with a pen of iron. And has not been cleansed. That for Belshazzar and for Babylon, <clears throat> the very moment that you brought those items from the Lord's house, the temple, you brought them in there and you gave the credit to the gods of the silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, and stone. And your proudness and your arrogancy I and the, the cup is filled calling judgment. There is coming a day <clears throat> in America. Our cup is filling up with sin. It's filling up with sin. I don't know where it is at, at any moment, but there will be a point that that cup is going to come 
and it's going to be filled. It's going to start overflowing. And I don't know how God is going to deal with America. He sent angels into Sodom. He sent the handwriting on the wall. I don't know what he's going to do to America. Because hey, it's done. You are beyond hell. Call in the judgment. And we need to recognize these nations, especially the ones that are mentioned in Daniel, Babylon, Medes and Persia, Alexandria the, Gate, the Great, though he is not mentioned, Rome, the Antichrist. We need to look at these people in these nations and see how they're destroyed. Look at Germany. Germany came to a point where the Nazis had killed so many Jews that God says, done. How did God tell Germany, you're done? America, yes. Get over there and kick their butt. Yes, sir. They need help over there getting that man. Yeah, I believe America was called by God to get over there and, and, and get rid of that man in the Nazis. England came to the end with the Belfort Declaration. We're going to help the Jews. We're going to send the Jews back to their land. But we got to give something to Jordan. And we have... Oh, she was it the RSV? I can't remember if it was the RSV. You left the King James Bible for... I believe it was the RSV. I could be incorrect on that one. But you left the, the King James Bible for a modern Bible. And God said, you're sunk. The, the sun never set on the English Empire. It does now. America's turn is coming up. Now, I don't know what God's going to do to warn this nation, but then it'll be destroyed. Germany was destroyed. Japan was destroyed. Russia will be eventually destroyed, according to the scriptures, at Armageddon. Oh, we fear Russia. We fear Russia. Well, you haven't read your Bible? Russia's going to be a top-known country all the way up to Armageddon. Gog and Magog. <clears throat> you just fear the media more than you fear God. So, there's a counting sheet of na for nations and for people. That, listen, a individual saved the law. He can sin and sin and sin and sin and sin and do wrong and do wrong and do wrong and do wrong. And God says, "All right, I'm done with you." He told Jeremiah for the don't even pray for them. There's no more hope. I'm angry. I fed up. They're gone. And he says, "Christian, about the, about the Lord's Supper. If you don't take part in the Lord's Supper properly, you could be sick or you could be dead." There's a point in the scriptures that Paul says that a man is fornicating with his father's wife. Turn that man over to Satan. Therefore, the very fact is, let that man drop dead right now so he don't lose any more rewards. Or that man repented and got right. I turn people over to Satan now. If you're going to destruct a Christian's life, you're going to deceive a Christian's life, whatever it be. If you're involved in, in, in teaching or anything that defies a Christian from growing, you better believe, brother, I have your name under Corinthians 5.5. 5. I'll turn you over to Satan. I know, not to be dead, but that's what has to be done. And or you can repent and get right. This was happening to Babylon. This what happened to, to, to Sodom and Gomorrah. We would, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, God destroyed Babylon. And do you realize how quick the judgment was upon Sodom and, and Babylon? It, the Bible says that, that, that Abram woke up, the sun was coming up, and he saw the smoke of the city. Now, Babylon wasn't really, I mean, they were burned and all that, but the city was still there for the Medes and Persians. Verse 27. Tekel. Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. All right? Babylon's been put in the, 
in the in the in the balance in the scales. <laughs> it's sunk. There's nothing. There's all the wickedness of, of Babylon. <clears throat> well, let's put the goodness of, of Babylon on the other scale. It didn't move. It didn't bounce out. Well, you're wanting. You know, they would do those balances in, in the trade. You know, when they had the market foods and all that in their time. And, you know, you go up to a guy and say, you know, I want tomatoes. How many tomatoes do you want? I want four of those nice tomatoes. And they'll take the four tomatoes and put it on the scale. And then you take your gold or silver and you put it on the other scale. And when, the, when this gold or silver weighed out with the tomatoes even, okay, here's your tomatoes and here's my money. But, you know, you put all your gold and silver in the scales and you're not even with the tomatoes, you need more money. When you go to the grocery store and, and you ring up your products and she says $5.98 and you, you go, oh, here's a five, okay, Ooh, here's a quarter, here's two quarters, found a dime. I don't have enough, I, I need more money. As far as the goodness and righteousness, Babylon has been found wanting. America will get that way. Do you know eventually if time holds and the Lord tarries? And believe me, listen, I've been in many Baptist churches from Connecticut to Florida. True biblical Christianity under the King James 1611 AV Bible and doing right and soul winning and trying to witness and trying to do everything proper is found wanting. I'm not saying it's completely gone, but it's getting there. I know a well-known preacher. Man, you knew what was going on in his church, not the churches he goes out to, but you knew what was going on in his church. If you knew about the pride and arrogancy... You knew what was going on inside the church house. What was being preached. And the conduct of the people. And the actions of that church. And you don't believe me. You need to go over to Revelation chapter 3. And read where it says. Unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. Right. To the end of that chapter. There may come a time in the world. The Lord tarried. I believe, this is what I believe, I believe there were eight people in that ark. There was one person at the cross besides Jesus. I believe Christianity, I'm talking about biblical Christianity, I believe it's going to get down to a very handful of people before the rapture comes. I believe when the rapture happens <coughs> on a Sunday morning, many churches will be They'll go on with their service, exit the doors, go get some chicken, go get a hamburger, whatever they go get. They'll be, they won't even notice that the rapture happened. I feel there'll be a time that you'll be found wanting for Christians to serve. And Christians to do. That's in the church today. I guarantee Jesus Christ, what's he doing? What's he wanting? He's knocking on the door, waiting for a Christian to step out and say, come on, Lord, this you and I dying. Oh, the church is having many fellowships, but Jesus is not with it. Read, Re no, I don't believe he said that. I can't believe he said that. You haven't read Revelation chapter 3. You have not been in many Baptist churches. I ain't talking about the Catholics. I ain't talking about the Presbyterians. I ain't talking about the Charismatic. I'm talking about the Baptist churches. There are very, very, very few that are doing right. Found one thing. In our age, glad to see that one team. Verse 28, Perez. Now he he takes off the, 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 the you. But Perez is the kingdom is divided. 
It's the Medes and the Persians. That's what he's saying. Divided it. Now this is the this is the, the, the symbol of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. The golden head. That's you, Never. That's you. You're gone. And the image has been decapitated. What are we looking for next? We got the silver of the arms. What is there? There are two arms. What is it? It's two nations, the Medes and the Persians. Look at that. We're not even halfway through the book of Daniel, and the, the image has been decapitated. Now we're at the arms. And it's funny, you know, we call arms to weapons and all that. Do you realize what they did to conquer Babylon? They, uh, it's funny, because didn't anybody notice? They rerouted the river. There was a river that ran in the middle of Babylon. They rerouted that river enough that where that river went through the city, the, the bars were there. They cut or removed those bars, and they went under the wall into the city. They would not have done much damage, very few fires. And they would have the, the swords and the darts and the arrows. That would have been the job. The head of the image is decapitated. It's gone. End of Daniel's message. Daniel calls him to repent and get right. And then, then commanded Belshazzar. And they clothed Daniel with scarlet, red. Put a chain of gold about his neck. We call it a, a necklace. And I'll tell you one thing about Belshazzar. He, he's true to his word. And made a proclamation concerning him. That he should be the third ruler of the kingdom type of the Holy Spirit. In that night. Not a day. Not a week. Not a month. Not a year. Not a decade. In that night. Was Belsizer the king of Chaldeans slain. By the means of the person. <coughs> That quick. It was that quick for Solomon Gomorrah, and it's going to be that quick for America. Dyrus the Mede. You know, our, you know it, it, the Medes and the Persian. You know, you know what, what one of the gods is today? The media. And all the wars and all what's going on is back over there in Babylon area, in Syria. We're right back to where we were in the Bible. The king is dead. I was assumed by the Bible saying in that night is he's gone to bed, maybe hang over, but he's gone to sleep. And he wakes up in hell. And he's still there today. Pride brought that man to hell. He gave Daniel the scarlet, the golden chain, and gave him the authority, the ruler of the kingdom. But where is the repentance of Belshazzar? It's not there. Everybody's going to go to heaven. Not Belsizer. I believe his grandpa, Nebuchadnezzar, will be in heaven. Not Belsizer. He never repented. You know, the Bible says when the writing hit the wall, his knees were knocking together, and his, his body was just shaking, his face was turned to terror. You know, the Bible doesn't record that when Daniel tells him anything. He had... The Bible does not record his reaction. Ah, uh, okay, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 
Here, Daniel, here's your stuff. Leave me alone. Oh, time for bed. See you in the morning, wives. Servants, will you clean up all this mess? You better be clean by the morning. Or you're going to have hell to pay. Oh, excuse me, Hades. He goes to bed. I'm going to take uh, in the night, and I could be wrong. I mean, this is not something I'm going to lose a reward. But I'm taking the bed. Spiritually, he goes to bed, wraps himself up in a king's bed. And in the middle of the night, and Dyrus the Median, that's not the where you drive your car down the middle of the road, that's the meat. Okay, we'll pick up with him next now, the next kingdom. Took the kingdom. The dead body of the king is on his bed. He's dead. Babylon is gone overnight. Can you imagine the reaction of the Babylonians in that night? Terror. Grab your mask. Get the vaccine. Get in your bomb shelter. We're live on the spot and the Medes are attacking us. Oh, 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 yeah, boom. You're gone. Where is the Republican king to save us? He's dead. That quick. That quick. Go ask Psalm Gomorrah. The Bible says that Psalm Gomorrah would have been wiped out sooner had not Lot gotten up and left. The Bible says that Lot lingered and the angel's like, Get going, because we can't do what we need to do. We can't do what we need to do until you're out. And, well, oh, I can't go. That's too far. I can't go this trip. Will you get out of here so we can do what we need to do? It's almost like uh, I'm spiritualizing. I'm wrong. I wish he'd go to bed so we can do what we can destroy this city right away. As soon as that boy gets to bed, then we're going to put a couple of sleeping pills in his drink or something so we can get that guy to bed. Because in that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, is slain, and Darius the Mede took the kingdom. And being about three score, sixty, and two years old. Now there's something to the Holy Spirit telling us his age. Because Darius. And Cyrus, the next two kings, they're pretty good kings, especially to the Jews. But on the image of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the golden head has been decapitated. We are now with the left and right arm. And we're going to have some images, we're going to have some views very soon of the next coming kingdoms, including the Antichrist, and we're, we're going to take these studies very slow. And we're talking about Chris, oh, we love the book of Revelation, we love the book of Revelation, oh, the Revelation, oh! And every church right now is, we're doing the book of Revelation, we're going to do the book of Revelation, we're going to study the book of Revelation, we're going to do the book of Revelation. I know a church down south where you are, Every week we do one chapter of the book of Revelation. We move. Hey, we did it in two 22 weeks. We may, we may have skipped a couple of chapters because, you know, it's redundancy and it's just stuff that's done before. And yet you don't know what's going on in Daniel. I challenge you for me and send me the results, please. I challenge you to walk up to two or three Baptist churches that you're not a member of. When they come out the doors, say, excuse me, how you doing? You, good? you, you like your church? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Can I ask you a question? One question. Actually, two questions, I mean. You like the book of Revelation? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, they do. All right, so question number two is, can you tell me who Belshazzar is? And don't you mention Bob, just say, Belshazzar. Because Daniel and the book of Revelation go one and one, and the book of Revelation and Daniel go one and one. 
There's a king that's been fallen. And two come up. Did you not read that there, there, there are seven heads and seven crowns and, and the horns and one is gone and one comes back up? And then you have the Antichrist. We are now on the road to the Antichrist. And we've been on the road of Antichrist since Babylon, since Nebuchadnezzar. Interesting Bible study.